next speaker is a man who is fighting unilateral sanctions by America in all corners of the world. I don't know whether the world is four corners, but maybe six or eight. Everywhere where the Americans have imposed themselves, he's fighting those sanctions. Mm -hmm. So we are going to give him this time to address us and give us a solidarity speech on how, on fighting sanctions against Zimbabwe. Come to John. Thank you. He's late to the Africa. Africa. Yes. yes. I'm an organizer with the All African People's Revolutionary Party. And as my Conrad General indicated, the solution is Pan Africanism, a unified Africa under socialism. We see that this actions that are taking place in terms of sanctions against Zimbabwe in an effort to deter us from that path. We know that when they made these rules that they called, that they passed in Congress, that these weren't sanctions against individuals, these were sanctions against the people, the masses of people. Their intent was not to stop a few individuals, or even stop a political party. Their intent was to try to push for regime change. Their intent was to cripple the economy. Their intent was to make the people suffer. But instead they disguised these that the real truth of what they're trying to do. And they're doing the same thing in so many places in the world over so many years. <clears throat> Since the 1950s when they imposed unilateral sanctions against North Korea. In the 1960s when they imposed unilateral sanctions against Cuba. And they imposed unilateral sanctions against Venezuela. So we see that all of these places are suffering. The masses are suffering, not individuals, the masses. I had the unique experience of living in Zimbabwe from 2003 to 2004, being a professor there, and I saw the impact it had. We couldn't get fuel, we couldn't get equipment for the university. I was there in Bulawayo and they were constructing buildings. The construction stopped. Why? Because the sanctions crippled the economy. The hyperinflation that it caused made it impossible to get the, uh, the material to even finish a building. It was so bad we had ordered a lab of computer equipment and with the sanctions and the hyperinflation instead of getting a lab we got two computers. This is the kind of suffering that took place. This hyperinflation created a situation where, the, where your wages were worth nothing. So what is happening? And then the people go to the street and march for increased wages. The students go and march for increased bursaries. And they know this is what's, uh, what's going to happen when they impose these sanctions. So we need to unite all of our forces, all of our forces across Africa. The All African People's Revolutionary Party is calling on this extension of anti-sanctions day, the anti-sanctions month, so that we organize across the world. Today also, our party is working with other organizations to organize a mass program in Washington, D.C., a teaching, because the key is we have to educate our people in terms of what's happening with these sanctions. We must force these universities to push so that they include in the curriculum an understanding of these sanctions. These sanctions are political, these sanctions have economic effect, there's a history to the sanctions, but no history, economic or political science classes teaching this to our people. This is why we must decolonize education. I stand with Sano Pierre. He's the late too. Yeah, Africa. Yeah, Africa. He's the late too.